Let's move on to the economy. There was some major news uh, that happened just yesterday that I wanted to give some uh, points to. Let's put this up there on the screen because it's absolutely fascinating. NVIDIA uh, has now reported fourth quarter results that have topped Wall Street expectations at the top and the bottom line. The chip giant has reported a stunning adjusted earning per share of $5.16. But the more important thing is that their revenue was $22 billion this quarter compared to estimates of 20 $20.4 billion. That is the data center revenue specifically that has topped all of their expectations. Their CEO, Jensen Wang, says that accelerated computing and generative AI have hit the tipping point and demand is surging worldwide across companies, industries, and nations. The reason why all eyes were on the NVIDIA uh, earning reports, Crystal, I was kind of telling you about this before they came out yesterday, yeah. is that NVIDIA at this point has become so dramatically valued in the S&P 500 that basically the hopes of the U.S. tech sector and it's not an exaggeration, a huge portion of index funds and thus all 401ks, retirement accounts for the vast majority of people are riding in some ways on this one stock. And the stock itself, for the earnings of this company, we're talking about something that has seen like orders of magnitude exponential growth in just the last decade. And it is belied by the fact that they make the infrastructure, the chips that are what many of these large AI companies are then using to power their data centers and others. So their earnings and their ability to generate revenue and to continue that increase is kind of a bet on AI as a backstone, as a backdrop of the US economy and the changing nature of where a lot of capital and other things are flowing. So it is a bright spot um, if you are a stockholder, but it is also indicative of how much money continues to flow into AI and why, you know, as we cover all of the social changes that happen as a result, it, there's no there's no stopping it. And I think uh, the CEO is definitely correct. Like it is a tipping point in that, you know, this is one of the most powerful, uh, one of the most powerful, valuable companies now on earth that I wouldn't say it was virtually unheard of 10 years ago, but it was not even close to the power of Google, Facebook, Microsoft and all that, that it is now. I mean, it's now valued up near like Exxon in terms of uh, in terms of a company that almost frankly, almost came out of nowhere. And so it shows us like where the power in the U.S. economy is going. So according to CNN, NVIDIA makes up 70% uh, of AI yeah. semiconductor right. sales to show you how dominant they are in the industry and how critical they are to it. And I guess, Sagar, my understanding was mm. part of why people were watching closely to see this earnings report was basically to get a sense of whether the AI boom is real or yes. if this is like a bubble that's sort of, you know, been overhyped and imminently about to bust, and also to see whether the Biden administration's restrictions on exports of chi chip sales mm -hmm. to China, whether that had significantly curbed uh, NVIDIA's growth, and I guess the answer is not so much. It did not, yeah. I mean, everything that we're able to see, here, I'll give everybody an example. So in 2012, the annual revenue for NVIDIA was 3.9 billion. In 2024, it will be 60.9 billion. Last year, in 2023, they did 26 billion. And then, you know, if just five, seven years ago, in 2018, they they did nine billion. It's just like one of the most insane rises in revenue for a U.S. company, or for yeah, for a U.S. company. I believe they're headquartered in Santa Clara, ever. And it's one of those where it has come to now uh, encompass so much of the S&P 500, of the tech sector as kind of an indicator of where all these things are going. And honestly, I kind of, I find it kind of exciting, you know, to have a company like this just come out. We're so used to the Googles, the Facebooks, the Exxons, Microsoft, and all of that, that all of a sudden out of nowhere, you have this freaking, you know, insane company with all this productivity, this new CEO, the back, he's like holding the back of the U.S. economy, you know, on top of him. But I also do want to caution everybody that, you know, the gains and the wealth that is all being generated here is pretty highly concentrated yeah. only in tech. And the better, honestly, the better that they do, the more we need to watch for the social implications of white collar work mm -hmm. that gets cut off and, you know, wh whatever the, the in terms of lawyers and uh, all the other industries of which this is set to disrupt. Like this is the backbone, the chips that are going to power much of the software revolution that will come on the back. Of I was just going to yeah. um, raise those concerns because uh, you had an announcement two days ago that Google, in spite of earning record profits, is still laying off thousands of employees, 12, uh, tw thousands more employees after already laying off 12,000. And so that shows you the way that this is further concentrating wealth mm -hmm. 
in the hands of a very few people. Um, so, you know, even the companies that are most directly participating and most directly benefiting from this AI boom, I mean, in some ways, they're also the ones that are first to shed employees because of the, the gains and the technological advances that are being made here with AI. So I am really concerned about that. I think you can already see those developments happening right now in real time. So it's great for, you know, people who are, have stock hold, significant stock holdings. Yes. It's great for people who are at the top of these companies who don't feel like their jobs are at risk. But for a lot of white collar workers, I'm sure they sh they should and probably are looking on at these developments with a lot of concern. And we're gonna about to talk more about AI <laughs> and what the hell's yes. going on there because um, there are a lot of other concerns, obviously, about the development of AI and whether we, as a society and as humanity, mm -hmm. are ready for it, and certainly whether our political system is ready for it. Right. To we, which the answer is certainly no. We may have great chips, but if the programmers aren't good, as we'll show you with Google, uh, there's not <laughs> there's not a lot you can do. <laughs> Hey guys, if you like that video, go to breakingpoints.com, become a premium subscriber and help us build the best independent media organization on the planet. That's right, we're subscriber funded, we're building something new, we wanna replace these failing mainstream media organizations. So again, to subscribe, it's breakingpoints.com.